exciting and exhausting at the same time. It throws many challenges for parents, more so if they're both working. Any amount of guidance is not enough. I have with me Dhadni Srinivasan, a dear friend and founder of Disha Montessori. She's been an educator for the last 30 years with a rich and varied experience of working with children. I'm going to talk with her about what are the needs, what are the challenges that parents face, and how does the school assist in dealing with these challenges. So Dhani, what are some of the needs that parents need to keep in mind, especially at this stage of development of the child? So hi Ragni, mm -hmm. wonderful that we can sit and chat together. Um, yeah, it's, it was always a passion for me to get involved at this stage of a child's life, you know, when they're just beginning and their whole journey is ahead of them, their life is ahead of them. Uh, so as an educator, if I am to explain to you, there are different planes of development in an individual, which goes on, in fact, right up to old age. But we are now concerned with this plane of development and there are critical needs at each plane of development. So uh, for a child of this age, the main critical needs are the need for autonomy, the need to need for relatedness and the need to feel competent. So through various experiences, through the way we interact with the child and through um, the activities that they do, these things have to be fulfilled and uh, the child has to feel confident about this before they can move into the next plane of development. So when you talk about relatedness, Nani, what exactly do you mean? And and what for what would what are parents expected to? Okay. To? Yeah. So relatedness is actually so very important at every stage and more so at this age, because related re relatedness really means our ability to connect to other people who are a very integral part of our lives and the ability to receive and give nurturing and care and this really helps to build the child's confidence each of these which i mentioned as a matter of fact help to build the child's confidence and make the child ready for the next plane of development so autonomy would in fact mean the the um, a child moving towards independence to the extent that they can at this age Competence would mean the child's ability to receive praise and appreciation for what they have done. There is a need for that and it's important that we give it to them in proportion to what the child has worked on or the effort a child has put in to walk or to say a few words or to eat by themselves. Yeah, so that makes sense that what you're saying, that you're saying autonomy, relatedness and competence. These three are really the most important at this stage. So how do you think parents can deliver these and, and you know really take care of these things? What can they do? Right. It's uh, very interesting and it's something that I'm sure a lot of parents uh, think about it. Um, what parents need to keep in mind most importantly is that at this stage the child is constructing his own personality. So if they understand this, uh, parents should look at the child and maybe fast forward 10 years from now or 15 years from now, what is the kind of child they would like to give to this world? How would they like the child to grow up and what are the values they would like this child to have? And keeping that in mind, that's what the parents need to work on from this very moment. So things like uh, emotional safety for a child is a very important thing. Child should be able to feel comfortable, safe and cared for in any environment that they are and to be able to ask for these if it's not being met. Communication is another very important aspect. Parents and chi the child should be able to communicate in a a healthy and purposeful manner for each other to understand one another. So these are the things that basically parents should keep in mind and um, all very sensible and uh, commonplace 
suggestions, nothing very, uh, you know, dramatic or something that requires a lot more. But it obviously requires a lot of consistency and a little bit of understanding of the child's development on the part of the parent. Okay, so you're saying that communication is also very important other than, you know, what you spoke about earlier. Right. But really being able to talk to the child age appropriate. Right. Yeah, and, and really understanding the child's mind. Right. What, what, what are the challenges that parents face in today's environment, in today's world? Yes, today's parents as well as children are facing a lot of challenges unique to this age that we are in. And um, the first of course is the onslaught of social media in our lives and uh, technology which is accessible at a very young age as well. Uh, and in cities I would say the fact that parents are very busy and there's a lack of time for their child, um, though there's a very strong and positive intention mm, and uh, parenting being done by multiple people in the child's life not just the parents but there are other people looking after the child who may not be able to give them just what the parents want and what the parents need uh, for the child of course most importantly i would say is the fact that the child's uh, sphere of influence uh, is uh, becomes their peers at a very much earlier age today than it was uh, maybe a couple of generations ago where one could have a greater influence on how they brought up their child for a longer time whereas now that time has become very short and within a very short period parents have to be able to main, to build this strong bond and bond of communication with the child which should last them a lifetime. So yeah. as an educator, Dharni, what are the challenges that you face with the children? Yeah, so uh, we do face a uh, lot of challenges. As I uh, have been uh, answering you in the earlier questions, when a child has not achieved all that they need to achieve at that stage and that age of their life, and they move on, they're growing up, then there are a lot of spillover problems from not having done that, you know. So, um, when a child is six or seven or eight and you suddenly expect him to show an independence which you have not allowed him to have at a younger age and that has been denied to the child actually out of maybe out of love or out of a lot of caring that the parent wants to do a lot for the child when they are younger and suddenly expects them to have achieved a certain degree of independence. This child is not ready for that. So these kind of problems we see a lot in the classroom when the child has either been uh, um, stifled a little bit or the child has had people doing everything for them or the child has not received his full share of complete warmth and love in the form of touch, in the form of uh, time spent with the child, stories read to the child. Such a child does feel, these, child cry, these children cry a lot more, they may cry very easily, they may be very restless in the classroom, not able to sit and give attention to what they are doing for a you know, useful length of time and uh, they may wander around a lot, they may whine a lot and instead of asking for what they want, they may already start to cry about it, expecting that one is going to say no to them. So a lot of these things uh, come from the fact that the child has not, has not been allowed to fully be independent, to fully feel, has not fully received praise for what he has done, for how he has grown and not fully received the complete love and attention and time from parents. So these things manifest in different ways as the child keeps growing from one stage to the other. Okay. So what you're really saying is when the initial needs are not fulfilled yeah at the, at the right at the beginning and these needs then get spill over in the uh, uh, you know growing up stages right and when they actually come to school and then you know those needs which are spilled over are then you know uh, could be an obstruction or a, or a or a deterrent to further growth right yeah? yes yes so how can 
parents and teachers work together in ensuring that some of these needs of the children are met. This becomes very imperative and very necessary uh, for there to be uh, for the child to feel that uh, all the adults in his life are consistent and are saying the same thing. So the very first thing is absolutely there should be no conflict between what is uh, happening at school and what is happening at home. So um, teachers also need to be very um, clued on to the child's needs. And yes, in a Montessori we are. We know what the child uh, needs and we know he will achieve them if we give him the right conditions for that. And sometimes parents need to be um, educated in this. They may not always know. There's a lot of um, love for the child and there is a lot of desire in the parents for the child to grow up in a certain way, but they may not know. They may need the direction of how to do this. So when there's a lack of conflict and there's a good communication between the home environment and the school environment, this really benefits the child a lot. So the child should in fact be raised with people all around him who give him ample appreciation. He should be raised in an environment of understanding and raised in an environment of praise and appreciation. Then, uh, then such a child will, you know, blossom to his fullest. But uh, when you asked about how should educators and uh, parents work together, both of them should spend enough time to understand the child. In fact, a lot of parents are taking to alternate education these days because they feel this is not happening in schools. And a child who spends about 14 years in school from the age of 6 to the age of 18, 20, uh, such a child is, is giving a good good chunk of his growing up years to other people you know who are around him and these people should also be able to have open conversations with families open conversations with the child themselves so that all caregivers all adults in the child's life are saying the same thing and he's not receiving mixed messages so so as an educator I, i'm sure you find challenges with teachers also right uh, i mean they also need to have the right approach, the right frame of mind in in uh, communicating with the parents. So, what what is your uh, take? So, Ragni, a teacher is as much a part of this society as all as any other individual, right? A teacher is also a and the teacher comes with her own uh, past and her own history of of her schooling years and her parent how she has been parented. Uh, so a teacher really needs to be aware of this through workshops, through uh, studying and through uh, reading up, which is it's very important that a teacher keeps learning through her life. And learning how to handle children of today is becomes very critical if she is to enjoy her time in the classroom and if she is to be able to reach out, to be able to reach out to every child under her care. So yes, it's very important, very critical for teachers to also um, be aware of the kind of problems children are facing today and to be sensitive to these problems and that the uh, school as a whole supports teachers in doing this through various uh, you know interventions initiatives workshops and um, through also helping the teacher to grow to her fullest them as much as she can within the environment so i, I see that as a big responsibility for educators yes. that that you do support your teachers with training and and you know educating them also in how to handle the children and the parents right it is it is it's a very important part of any school to do this so Dhani, what is the one thing that really bothers you about uh, children and, and and the way things are turning out today uh, ragni that would really have to be uh, the pro the fact that maybe children are even at a disadvantage even as they are being even as they come into this world because today uh, almost every woman who is expecting is also working right up to the end and her workplace demands a lot from them uh, the mother is restless anxious um, and also constantly on deadlines and 
the use of her own phone and her laptop and computer for various things that she has to do as part of her work. And uh, it's been, uh, you know, certainly proven that a child who's growing with the mother, growing in the mother's uh, womb, uh, right during, right through her pregnancy, is feeling and absorbing all of these things. And so today's children are in fact even coming into this world already with a very uh, higher, with a higher degree of restlessness and anxiousness as compared to uh, a mother, compared to a child being born from a mother who is calmer and, uh, you know, whose period of pregnancy is a much, much more relaxed so this, I would say, is really yeah, relaxed and enjoyable one. And this is really a challenge for us today. And going forward, a couple of more generations, this impact is going to be felt. And how does that manifest in children when they come to school? Yeah, it manifests in children who are very restless, who are anxious, who are, uh, uh, who have un, uh, who have sleep patterns which are not normal. Children who have a lot of demands on their parents because uh, they themselves have not felt the complete... There are certain movements which are very important, certain reflexes which uh, a newborn has which slowly start dropping off as the child grows older. There are certain movements of rocking and holding which are very important, as I said, to connect to the earlier point of relatedness, which happen very naturally and should keep happening but unfortunately some of these things don't happen because of a very busy mother with her tight schedules and with her probably one hand always being on a phone and um, so that's why we find such children um, showing up with these kind of uh, problems. So I think the crux of our discussion and, and what you have uh, spoken about that is really that there are three things that parents need to keep in mind. One is the love, affection and the relatedness that, uh, that they can give to the child. Um, how can they um, you know, raise a child who feels competent enough, which is age appropriate. Yes. Yeah? And of course, uh, you know, connected to these two is the autonomy. How does the child feel independent enough, feels confident enough to go about in this world? Yeah, I think that that's really makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Dharani, so much for this lovely uh, conversation and giving your time. Thank you. It was wonderful chatting, Dharani. <laughs> <laughs>